Recognized, Emily of Arden, D, 1, 2. Recognized, Joe Moniak, D, 0, 5. Hello team, and welcome to Intel Update 20. My name is Emily, and I am here with producer Neil. Hello. And we're going to be talking about the new Young Justice Phantoms trailer that just got released last week, as well as doing a little retrospective on the season so far and what we think might be coming in part two of this season. Let us begin. Show me the one true king. Everyone has a breaking point. So... We got a new trailer last week, and it's 30 Seconds of Chaos, and we've all been screaming about it in various directions, and basically my reaction when I first saw it still remains my general reaction to it, which is just, new characters, rapid cuts, I have no idea what's going on, but I'm excited. Yeah, and I think my exact quote like in our text thread was, there's so much there, there's nothing here, I don't know, (laughs) I don't know what to do. It's because there's so much there that I feel like is going to, once we see it in context, we're going to be like, oh, that's so important. But right now there are, there are so many unidentifiable characters in this trailer that aren't, and because Young Justice is drawing on the entire DC canon in history, like it's not even easy to pinpoint who they might be based on guesses. So we're all kind of sitting there like, that's a a dude and we're going to see him, I guess. And that's that's a person who might do magic, question mark. Uh, and that's the vibe. This person has been observed with both a beard and without a beard. Yes, yes. Very, you're very hyped about that. Oh, it looks so good. So basically what I absorbed from the trailer, my rapid thoughts uh, of noticing anything are we got a bunch of magic users doing magic. We're going to New Genesis, question mark. Uh, Calder's going to punch a shark. Uh, We might finally be getting Garfield to therapy, maybe. Uh, And many things are going to explode. You? (laughs) Thoughts? Uh, Hey, who's that? Who's talking? What's happening? Oh, trailer's over. (laughs) (laughs) Basically, there's a lot of me being like, Ooh, you're you're saying words, and I have no context for them in every direction. But the couple of things that I'll call out, and then you can call out some of your things. Uh, oh yeah, because I feel like I feel like you absorbed more details from this trailer than me, because I was just focused on like the emotional arc of these thirty seconds. <laughs> like I'm not. I literally sure. have mad scrawling that I just pulled out of my my. My bag. Absolutely so valid. Uh, considering like there were details that I didn't even pick up until like a third or fourth watch that were the first thing you picked up. So like that's where we're at sometimes with this show. Mm-hmm. So it looks like this is the one thing that kept standing out to me every time I rewatched this trailer because it's it's there are multiple clips from it, but I'm still not quite sure what's happening. So here's my take on at least part of this trailer. It looks like there is a fight. Featuring Calder, Nightwing, and also possibly Zatanna, who also looks like she is part of this same fight. And I can't Mm -hmm. tell if it's happening in the Tower of Fate or like some sort of apocalypse spaceship. Because there's all the weird MC Escher labyrinth staircases, but there's also these like weird floating glowing containment boxes i say with several question marks because that's what they look like to my mind but i can't be sure because we have no context uh that are either like gold or red depending on the shot and i can't decide which fight location seems more likely for their show so i'm just sitting here going something is happening and it seems cool and i have no idea what it is yeah i definitely at first i thought it was the tower of fate like right away i lean a little bit more away from it because in the tower of fate she is dr fate yes. at that time unless but then she's not i know unless she's like literally throws the helmet off at someone else is definitely what i thought of just like here oh, you take this me being like maybe time passes and neil being like what if people just throw the helmet in the middle of the fight <laughs> yes and just roll it over i need <laughs> i need the power of fate But I think they're all in the same battle, like the explosion right in front of Zatanna and the one that Dick is jumping over seem all 
almost the same. Um, so I would wager that whatever battle that is, all three are there. For sure. Yes. I, I just want to know. Uh, and I like that we're going to be seeing Zatanna both as Dr. Fate and as just Zatanna. Because that, I assume that means some time is going to pass. Though Neil thinks perhaps people are just tossing off the helmet whenever they choose to. But either way, I think that's just going to be cool. And we're hopefully going to see a bit more of. How her, how her plan that came together very rapidly will play out, uh, which is nice. I like that we're not just like, and we've wrapped up that plot line and put it on the shelf. It's like, no, there will be consequences. Let's explore them. As always on Young Justice. Oh, yeah. And then the final piece is her in like the fate space where she's clearly interacting with Dr. Fate as well. Which Yes. I know you're excited <laughs> for, for, for exactly what that can be. Yes. Like, I'm sh- I'm sure a lot of it will be various serious conversations about uh, the choices that affect humanity and whether or not things are the right thing to do in any given moment and Zatanna and Fate arguing over decisions of cosmic importance. But also, I want this magical girl to be sassing a millennia year old s- spirit of order in the universe because... You know what? She deserves it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Zatanna I'm, I'm can be gonna... mad at this entity all she wants, and I will look forward to seeing her not put up with it. It's literally like my emotional read of this relationship. I have no idea if I'll be right, but my emotional read is just is it at one week a month, Zatanna is just like, hello, I'm your problem now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Look, here's the deal. I'm going to be frustrated about the fact that over the span of a decade, you set up a rule where I saw my father a grand total of 10 hours. I'm not going to just let that go. <laughs> no, and she should. And I am here for it. I am here for uh, bitterly sarcastic, frustrated with everything Zatanna. Uh, but so much else happens in this trailer and I will not go completely down the rabbit hole that is me being like, where is my Zatanna Magical Girl spinoff comic? Uh, thoughts. So, but if we want to stay in the Tower of Fate, I I went back and forth to really figure out who the 11 people were that were around the bell. And because the shots end up being very different from the angles that they're viewed at, what I realized is that Zatanna is Dr. Fate, and then everyone's holding hands. First off, that was super funny to watch all these like really intense characters gra- calmly grab each other's hands. That's how um, magic Madame works, Zen-Din. Neil. You gotta hold hands. I know. <laughs> yes. Uh, Zatara, and then the part that took a bit to figure out is that Zatara is next to Blue Devil. So then we go around Blue Devil, Phantom Stranger, Jason Blood, Khalid, Tracy 13, and then the three that are in the front, who I think Garth is in the middle, Isis, and someone. Those are my guesses. We'll find out. And okay, genuine question, uh, because that shot. I am wondering, are there more people around on the other side of the bell, or do we see all the way around everyone in that scene, do you think? Because it would be very funny. So, okay, okay. because my brain is like just knowing the way that Young Justice aggressively avoids spoilers in trailers of just what's, how do we hide like four characters who haven't been introduced yet kind of vibe? There's... So this is my assumption, very much so. So then I figured, because I figured out how many sets of legs were hang- <laughs> were below the bell on the backside, and then I figured it out like who was holding which hand. Um, and I wore a tinfoil hat the the entire time. Um, but no, so you can see Zatara on the left, and then he's holding Blue Devil's hands, which you see from the other angle. So uh, the only ones I can think of that like I don't think I know at all is the. Um, Atlantean magic user that shows up. I think she's probably the the person I can't identify. Okay. There has been, I feel like I saw someone mention that she might be like an older version of Lori Lemiris, I think is the name, who's in the comics because it appears that we're also getting King Shark, who was in the comics for that one Atlantean uh, two-part comic arc because calder punch is a shark and i'm gonna assume that it's not just you know just a normal shark minding its business because that doesn't feel very calder i'm gonna assume that's like an anthropomorphic shark causing problems so many people including myself have kind of assumed of all the characters we can identify that one is probably king shark (laughs) and then of course it will end up not being 
King Shark. It's the other anthropomorphic shark from DC Comics that we all forgot about, who's in one issue of one Aquaman uh, comic mm. from 40 years ago that everybody forgets about, and he's here just because we use every character. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Where to jump to next? I mean... I mean, we jumped into these like these random lines from random people, and you brought it up. I mean, it's the it's the Zara law that I mean, how many in season three? How many characters did Zara um, <laughs> end up voicing? Because like, so there's it's difficult. Some one of the lines is clearly Nolan North, but Nolan North voices so many people on this show that I'm like, can't make any assumptions there. Yeah, because you have show me the one true king. Everyone has a breaking point, and he's the spawn dark side. For my, is the everyone has a breaking point line? Does it sound like it's said by McGann? Because I think it does, and I'm just yeah, and and, and it's in reference, like when you're doing the shot with with Gar at the window. yeah. So it's like that is the the only line that I feel like I have some idea of when it's probably being said. Is the everyone has a breaking point line sounds like it's probably McGann and probably talking to Beast Boy in that conversation of can we can we can an adult find beast boy and get him some help please but everything else i'm like i don't know what's going on even even the ones that are like there's some line that's like the people are in open revolt or something and it's yeah, right before a rebellion. clip of atlantis it's open rebellion and it's right before a clip of atlantis which would make you think it was that but i don't know there's so many governments in this show it could it's only dawning on me now at this moment as i say it but like it could be like markovia and everything that's happening there or something with queen perdita since we've brought her back into everything or any we don't know there's so many kingdoms on this show also show me the one true king who what also who is a child of dark side i have questions is that something i've never heard of before probably there's a lot of dc comics history i haven't heard of before because it's been going on for so long but also, just every single line in this trailer makes me go, huh? <laughs> every scene, every line, I go, huh? Um, yep. Yeah, because you also have like, oh, hey, uh, you know, just Macomb hanging out with the giant parademon, talking to this person I've never seen. Yep, just just Macomb being back, doing his thing. Gonna cause more problems on purpose. Yeah, where does that, es- yeah, and then I think, oh, good, you're back. Uh, what is your es- escalation after not having been very successful with the previous one? I'm sure it'll all go super smoothly. I'm sure there won't be any problems. Also, just 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 to throw it out there, one of the sons of Darkseid is Orion. Oh. So. Neil using his Google powers in the middle of recording. Uh, mm-hmm. There we go. Things I didn't know. Things we'll find out presumably i don't and it could be something completely different we never know on this show yeah Um, i mean it's not to say that there certainly aren't others and then also like there's certainly other ways that that line could be interpreted to then imply countless others yeah but because it's you know it's just vague enough to make us excited but very confused so what else what else you got that you're excited for from this trailer uh other than calder has a beard now Ah, it's so good. Well, also, then just seeing online the debate of like, well, how long could it possibly have been? If we, how long does it take an Atlantean to grow a beard? I'm like, we don't know. Please stop. Like, I can, we can't figure that out. But yeah, I don't know how long it's been. How long does it take to grow a beard? Things I wouldn't know. Neil, you would know this better than I do. How long does it take an a- Atlantean to grow a beard? I Who don't knows? Know. Like, what is? Does it take longer because their skin is thicker? Like, what's what's the rules? Well, it's not a very long beard. It could have. I don't know. I mean, if there's anything I'm going to ask Greg for, it's this. <laughs> what? <laughs> what specifically? How long does it take an Atlantia to grow a beard? Correct. Correct. <laughs> that's your question? Yes. You get one and that's what you go with? Yep. I'm going to submit it anonymously, but we all know now. <laughs> to, to the ask Greg said, go for it. Live your dream. Very Follow your heart. Question. Yeah, I mean, the, the funniest thing, of course, with all of this is that there's there's nothing to say anything about the timeline that we jump ahead on. Um, because in a lot of ways, things were somewhat wrapped up in that there weren't pillars of fire 
and death and destruction currently happening at the end of the last episode. So any amount of time that we jump forward is plausible. Or we could just be seeing clips from various points in the season. So it could be several months down the line, even if the next episode of the next part of the season picks up two days after the mid-season finale, we could have an episode seven down the line or whatever that's two months yeah. <laughs> later. What's interesting is that, you know, I mean, I mean, I certainly wanted to do it, but I, I certainly don't want to do it anymore. It's like I don't want to attribute a name to an arc anymore because I feel like that puts me in the wrong headspace to observe the arcs as they were intended. I think they are more focused stories, but give, giving ownership to an individual character feels like that might not work because I wonder if, and I, I don't even want to say this because I feel like people are just going to be mad at my thought. Um, <laughs> but like, what if Calder and, and Dick have the same arc? I hear you. I know we have had, we have had larger conversations about this, about how, I feel like we'll get into this in our retrospective thoughts, actually. So let's keep to the trailer for now, and then we'll get into thoughts on the whole season. Because uh, this will just take us down a rabbit hole, and I can feel it. Um, no, so, so but even so, even kind of so to veer on that same path, it's interesting because I feel like we got more of what the second half might be. But at the same time, I could always just be bamboozled into just like, oh, no, this is like the first six or eight episodes. Yeah. Because that's how the fir- the first the first trailer all things considered was surprisingly less of the first half than I would have expected upon watching it. And like, but like the first half trailer gave us, I feel like little bits and pieces of every single arc. Cause as we were watching the whole season, we're like, Oh, that was in the trailer. Oh, right. That was in yeah. the trailer, but like spaced out enough that like you could not piece together the plot of the first half of this season from that trailer. And this trailer, I feel like, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I feel like this trailer is significantly shorter than the last one. And I have still no idea what the plot is going to be. Like, even with the fact that the mid-season finale kind of set up like, hey, we all collectively got to figure out what's up with Connor. I have no idea how much of that is going to play into the second half of the season. There seem to be several plot lines going on all at once. New Genesis is involved. Metron is involved again, just showing oh, up yeah. and being like, hey, time to save everybody. I know you stole my chair last time, but. Hey, last time I was here, you stole my chair. And then a little bit after that, I accidentally kidnapped a toddler just to make a point. But it's time to save the universe. Yes. <laughs> now, now is the time. Also, uh, I mean, so you have the. F- I also think like that new Genesis art should be tons of fun because like, I, I love those characters. I love when they've shown up before. I mean, bear forager, I mean, that shot was pretty exciting, but I wonder how much time of course will be on there. Um, and also like who is Orion fighting? Yeah, I know we've had, is it bubble boy? <laughs> is it the man in the bubble? Whatever his name may be. I know we've had some talk of like, I think, maybe it's the only one that immediately jumped to my mind as a possibility, but also we've never seen that guy's face. So, Mm -hmm. and I, we still didn't in this trailer. I don't think, no, no, we just, cause we see him like they headbutt and also like hand over face and stuff. So still keeping that identity very secret. But also, we have no idea if it's the same person whose identity is being kept secret from us. Yep. No idea. Just, there is a fight happening. <laughs> so much and so little. Yep. Literally, this whole trailer was like every, pausing it at every single second and being like, that's a new character. And I can't even begin to assume who it is. <laughs> yeah. Like everything from like there is a brief shot of like Rocket on the phone with someone on like one of those mm-hmm. see through superhero science phones that people have yep. in superhero media. So you can see that who's on the phone. And I'm like, who's that guy? Honestly, I have no idea who's Rocket talking to. I can't yeah. even I can't even begin to guess. Uh, and I feel like that's that's everyone in this trailer. Theories abound. Well, because the who's the person that McCollum's talking to and where? 
is it on apocalypse i mean you, you've got some, some very apocalyptic feel to the clothing and the, the overall look of the person you know big scar shaved head because in the apocalypse you don't want your hair catching on think about it there you go that's the theory okay there's your, there's your psa for today <laughs> So, with us having covered every character that we don't know in this trailer and all of the other random details we're excited for, uh, do you want to get into some retrospective thoughts? Yes, I do. So, first, overall vibe of the season, how we feel in. I personally feel like, I think the season is pretty good. Like, I have talked about how there are some things from this season that I don't love, but those are more wrapped up in, like, not necessarily loving like a quote unquote darker tone on superheroes and like some of my personal preferences about the level of violence and gore. But that's yeah. just, again, all of these are all, any of my thoughts on this season, especially right now, are more just general preferences, not takes on the quality of writing or storytelling or anything like that. It is just a like, oh, that's not my cup of tea, but like I still like the thing overall kind of feeling. But I am reserving most judgment until the end of the season because I feel like there are some things that right now I'm like, well, that puzzle piece doesn't really fit anywhere. And then I feel like by the end of the season, we'll have been handed... 50 more puzzle pieces and suddenly they'll all fit together kind of feeling. I don't know where Greg may have mentioned this, but one of the things he mentioned was that like once we're done, the reason it's called Phantoms is intended to just be abundantly clear. And I feel like it is still very, very unclear. Yeah, no, me. no so, idea right now. I'm like, yeah, is it a sure. metaphor? Is it literal? Is it the Phantom Zone? Is it, what are we doing? Yeah. No idea, uh, but it's good to know that by the end of this, we'll understand what's happening. Yeah, so the other things that I'm thinking about now are things that I realize I haven't been thinking about the whole time. I mean, you know, all three seasons in the first half of the fourth, the music is amazing. Like That, that just goes without question. But the fact that like I don't even think about the animation anymore, just because everything is at Studio Mirror, like, it's just nice. Because the animation quality is just solid. It's the same. It's just really interesting to like retrospectively realize like I just don't think about it anymore because it's just at a standard. I hear you. But but the arcs the arcs are hard to some degree because that's not how we've experienced Young Justice before. Yeah. And I think that's really the biggest thing with it. I don't think that there's a problem with the arcs. I think that there's just like it's a different, it's like you're almost being served something you know you enjoy in a very different way. And so you're like, wait, yeah. hold on, what's happening? I feel like that's a really good way of looking at it. Because I feel like, because my thing has been like, is almost looking at it now, I'm like, if any other, if a new show came along and was doing this kind of arcs, I would, I probably wouldn't think twice about it. But because I have gotten yeah. used to the way Young Justice has done storytelling for so long that now with this way of doing this season of like focusing in on smaller groups of characters for an extended period of time, my brain just keeps going, but where's everybody else? What are they doing? You gave me a very big ensemble cast and now you're telling me not to worry about them all the time. Uh, and I'm not sure I know how to do that. Uh <laughs> yeah. In, in a lot of ways, it, it, uh, yeah, sometimes I realize that I don't want to say things cause then they might come true, but, um, <laughs> In a lot of ways, if you look at some of the streaming services, when they start to like extend shows, they often use the term parts um, rather than seasons because they end up extending that show in basically the arc the arc format that we're looking at, where because um, Disenchantment just came out with a, a new part on Netflix where it's six episodes or whatever, six episodes, yeah. eight episodes, um, so that kind of thing. So in a lot of ways, like. There's the plus and the minus that so many people are observing and in consuming media in that way that like I totally get it. But the other thing I was thinking is that like I realize how much I like the stories, but again, it's just really that I'm just not used to that that formatting style for Young Justice specifically. Yeah. So yeah, I'm really excited for the whole season and where I'll just like push play and just watch the whole thing. And how some of it is like there have been certain things from certain arcs, whether whether it's like. The one that keeps coming to mind right now is like the introduction of 
Jason Blood, that's his name, in Ooh, the yeah. like magical Doctor Fate arc and everything, was like such an important moment. And then it felt like he didn't do that much in that arc, which when we only have up to that arc feels odd as a viewer to me right now. But I feel like seeing that he is in the trailer and stuff, I'm like, I feel like this was a setup for a thing in a different arc, almost, if that makes sense, that we don't mm-hmm. have yet. So it feels weird when it won't feel weird later. Yeah. Because you still have those hints and those pieces because then Etrigan, like, you know, where all the random demons are coming from that I still don't understand. Um, but then Etrigan is there battling. Then Etrigan shows up and, and fights Child. But then you see him there. He's at the Jason Blood is there at the tower. And, and it's also just the thing of like each of the arcs has been even a different style between each arc for how they're doing these stories that I think is also part of why I think it's been a little odd to adjust to it out of the gate. Because, like, the first arc on Mars was so self-contained and so focused on our main characters and their relationships with each other and all of that stuff with the background of world building that was tied into those characters. So it didn't, all, like, it didn't feel separate. It didn't feel like we were getting, like, a small story and then also world building and lore. It felt like here is lore connected to these characters and it's all woven together. And this whole thing that was super self-contained because those first four episodes, there are no like extended flashbacks. There are no cuts away to earth. There's none of that other than the one cutaway that's to the watchtower because Martian Manhunter has arrived. And that's just part of like the rest of it is all focused on all of them. And then to even shift from that to like, the next arc with Artemis and Cheshire and everything and how even that one, it's like, okay, we're going to have an episode that is half that arc, half extended flashbacks of Cassandra's backstory. We're going to have repeated cutaways to Beast Boy. We're going to have a bunch of cuts back to Mars too. And all of these things, how that is already a different arc style than the first arc that I feel like it's the weird thing of like that first arc is really strong and it's might so far be kind of my favorite arc of the season, not just be for super Martian reasons, but for other ones. And it like kind of set an expectation that then the other arcs are doing different things and being different styles of storytelling that aren't bad. They're just different. And I feel like we as viewers keep having to catch up <laughs> a little bit of just being like, wait, I finally got used to the other one. Oh, no. <laughs> Well, and I, it, like, I think it makes it makes sense from like a narrative perspective yeah. that we would start so small and obviously need to continue to expand that out. But it did set an interesting tone because, you know, so unused to the process uh, of the arcs that you had this tone of like, all right, we're laser focused on this story. But then it, but in so many ways, like there's no way we could have stayed laser focused on the next story because in a lot of ways that would diminish what we've learned in the previous story. Yeah. If we're not referencing it in any way. Now that said, I love the focus. I, I mean, as many people did the second it was announced that there would be more of a focus on the original team. Um, and I am of those people. And then those people, of course have specific people that they're very uh, big fans of. And then like, that's the trade off is like, if you're focusing so heavily, then you do need to put other people to the side to give them the spotlight that you're intending to. Um, hence, Calder not yet having any lines. <laughs> Poor Calder. He tries so hard. Um, but And I've also been thinking with the arc structure of like a lot of shows that have kind of embraced the idea of arcs. I Looking back at a lot of other shows, because this does happen often, especially genre media shows have like a first half of a season arc and a second half of a season arc. Mm-hmm. But the thing I find interesting is looking at most of those, those arcs are generally defined by who the villain is for an extended period of time, because you'll have your all of your main hero characters who are all there. And then there is a villain who is new for this part of the season. And then we'll deal with something else later on or whatever it might be. And so it's interesting how uh, Young Justice is doing the thing of like, the arcs are far more defined by like, who's even here? Who from our cast of main characters is even going to be featured in this arc? Because they're not all going to be here all the time, even though we want them to be. Uh, (laughs) Even though I just finished a season one rewatch recently and was like, I miss when everybody got to be friends. (laughs) 
Yeah. <laughs> like, that's part of what I'm really hoping for in the second half of this season. And I feel like is not a is not a far fetched hope to reach for of like getting to see all these characters back together again. Because it's my favorite thing. It's one of my favorite things yeah. when we get to see the whole original team together. Uh, and with some of the setups from the end of the first half of like, hey, everybody, ghost Connor in space. I feel like that's a thing in which we call everyone. <laughs> and I am keeping all of my fingers crossed in hopes. I wonder, well, I mean, this would, you know, random speculation. We're in that zone. Um, I wonder if that's the spell. What do you mean? That's the sp- what to like go to go to where you like because remember it's Zatanna the, is the one that found yes the, you know the like echoes on the bus I don't know the what the echoes on the bus go round and round <laughs> but but the idea of just like yeah obviously I have two very small children but the idea of like it being falling into that realm like of like the magical magical being the way to continue that process of find it we're gonna do a get everybody together everybody hold hands we're finding connor yeah location spell of some sort i don't know but yeah uh we'll we'll see let's uh any more retrospective topics before we move into just theorizing what's your what's your favorite arc from this season so far and why (laughs) please explain in Uh, a short answer on the back of the test paper so I think the Artemis arc, um, just seeing Jade and like the development of that, because it, it felt like that was one of the characters that I wanted to see more from season three. I totally understand, like you know, decisions have to be made. Only so many people are going to get so much screen time. Um, that's just the nature of it. But just to see that development and just being hopeful of where <laughs> that it's not awful that she's still with Raish. Um, I just fingers crossed. That's All fingers not crossed that, is. that it's really, it's yeah. just a therapeutic island retreat and there will be no consequences. Yeah. And then most of the, like most of like the air quote, bad, bad guys, um, from that arc, I just really enjoyed. Yeah. I thought they were well done because they weren't just like, they weren't mindless. They weren't brutal. They were just on the other side. Um, and they still had like a lot of character behind them. Shade being my favorite, where I'm just like, he's just like, yep, we're even. I gotta go now, and just zips off into the, into the darkness. Never to go. Freelance villainy business cards. Print them at your local print shop. I have talked before that two things. One, I do, I do really love all of the stuff with Jade. I talking about it. I feel like I did not realize how much I missed Jade's energy on this show until uh-huh. we had several episodes of it. I was like, oh, it's so good to have her back and being snarky uh, and having like a fun, interesting, complicated relationship with everybody. I love this. I missed you. And it's all, it's that thing of when a char- when she was one of those characters that was in season three, but was in season three so briefly that like I was like, well, she's She's there, but okay. I kind of forgot how much I missed all of the wonderfulness that is Cheshire on this show because she's a great, fun character. Yeah, more of more of Cheshire. Add it to the list of spinoff tie-in comics that I desperately want is the the shenanigans of Cheshire if and when she moves back into the the. It's the when Harper Croc household, and I want the like sitcom tie-in comic. Everybody living in that house. Yep. But for me, I think my favorite arc is that first one and not just for Super Martian reasons, because I know I am aggressively me at all times. But aside from it just being yay wedding uh, at all times, it was also it felt very much like a throwback to kind of the tone and style of season one that I had of even just season one and season two that I'd kind of missed in season three which was looking back on it it's like the the first two episodes of season four are i believe the only ones that are rated tv pg on uh hbo max instead of uh pg-13 and so even just that of it being like less violent or quote unquote adult while still like discussing complex important topics which is what i actually want from a show that is being like a more mature take on superheroes i say with heavy quotation marks 
And it was also kind of, it felt at least to me, like that kind of perfect Young Justice blend of interpersonal character relationships driving and intersecting with a superhero plot because so much of that arc is really focused on how these characters relate to this situation and all of that in a really interesting way and how the overarching complicated politics of Mars is still approached in like the way of this is how this emotionally affects these core characters that we're dealing with. Like it isn't just a politics plot line that some characters happen to be present in. We are going to continually discuss this topic in terms of affecting our core characters, which I really like. And rewatching season one, a lot of season one is like stuff of how does this supervillain plot affect you emotionally, whether it's because your dad is a supervillain or because this is a metaphor for your emotional relationships with your distant mentor or whatever it may be. And that's my favorite thing about this show. Uh, And so just, yeah, moving into the rest of the season, I feel I have hopes that we will see more of this stuff, especially since we have been setting up some of those plot lines of to move into theories, get in losers. We're saving Connor. Uh, that feels very much like a, this is a big superhero plot line that is intrinsically tied to our OG character's emotional everything. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Especially if they figure out that there's any viability to that idea, which I mean, obviously that's, that, that's what I, I would have been led to believe by Echoes on the Bus going round and round. I just, like, I know, I know that the idea that Connor is actually unsavable, there is a greater than not there's a non-zero chance that we can't save connor but i'm keeping every every part of (laughs) every part of me crossed and hoping beyond hope that (laughs) we can save this boy (laughs) because i don't know because like i don't want to be like because mumbles into infinity i apologize (laughs) i just want to save connor that's all i want (laughs) i know there are other things happening but that's all i want (laughs) I'm aggressively me, and sometimes that means I'm predictable. Um, so what do you, to move into theories for a moment, uh, to move into theories for the end of our episode here, what do you think the secret message in these titles is going to be? Since last last season's was prepare the anti-life equation, if you put together the first letter of every episode of season three, you get prepare the anti-life equation. What are your theories for this this season's secret message i'll give you my theory that makes you happy yes invitation to krypton wedding yeah because i joked very i joked very early i don't remember if we mentioned this on air but i mentioned this to friends that i joked when we only had like three or four episodes i was like it's invitation to the best wedding and i (laughs) joked about it uh because i was like there's no way this is going to be true and then with each passing episode it became invitation to and i'm like oh no (laughs) was i right i was like i'm joking (laughs) i am fully joking guys yeah so we ended the season with invitation to k yes so my original theory is shot but yeah so it leaves us with 13 characters Safe to assume thirteen letters. The no, the last the last four are just punctuation somehow. Yeah, well it could be a number. I don't know. <laughs> we just start like episodes have completely normal titles, but they start with a comma now. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Comma normal episode title. We're doing a bit. <laughs> yeah, so I also wonder if the the K stands for kill. Um is often what like what I think of depending on if Either Vandal or Darkseid is bent on doing something different. We shall see. No no murder. No more murder. Well, I also feel like I, this is the other thing I thought of. It's like, oh, do we ju- how far do we jump ahead? Because we jumped ahead a year in the old in the old bus extravaganza um to see Big Barda a year later. Right. <laughs> I keep forgetting about that. Yeah, I, I I I just really dawned on me right the second again. It's like, oh yeah, we jumped ahead a year. But that doesn't mean anything other than that's what happened in that moment. Do it does that happen again this season? Could that be next season? Who knows? They've been they've been planning this bus 
thing since season one. So who yeah. knows? There could be hints for seasons in the future in that whole montage. <laughs> we don't know. Uh, but we'll see. We can only hope that it's an invitation to a nice fun thing. Okay, do you have any theories other than Krypton best wedding ever? Not really. It's an invitation to something, and I feel like it is either an event, a place, or some combination thereof. Or possibly, as you keep throwing around the word kill, it is an invitation to go do an activity. Invitation to kite surfing. I would like to pose that for official review. Um yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like we're going to end up getting I mean, my my hope of hopes is certainly that like wherever or whatever was being leaked in terms of episode titles and synopsis, that's been figured out in a break. That would be fantastic. Regardless, I mean, episode 14 immediately starts us down whatever track we want, because not a lot of things can have um, invitation to Clarion. Like, what are we doing? I don't know. I just feel like it's just a lot is going to be learned. Yeah. Whenever we, yeah, whenever we find out what the next letter is, we'll be piecing together some questions. And as we wait for episode 13 to come out and tell us whatever the next letter is in all this, we still have no official release date at the time of this recording. Maybe that'll change in the next couple of days before this episode comes out. And if it does, we'll adjust. But as we have learned, we need not have an official release date to have a release. <laughs> it, yeah, uh, it's coming in the spring. And that's all we know. And that could mean anything. The next several months are all the spring. So, you know, at any time there could be new Young Justice. <laughs> we'll find out eventually. Yep. I'm, uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go update HBO Max right now. Who knows? No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, other than that, it's. Now, it's the funny thing. It's like we have a trailer and we still don't know when the next part is coming and we have no idea what it's about and we don't know who half the characters in the trailer are, but we got a trailer. Yep. <laughs> yep. One step closer. One step closer. And with all of that out of the way, I think we can Zeta out of the watchtower. Thank you for spending some time with us today. If you'd like to join us in discussing this incredible series, you can find us on Twitter at the YJ Files, on Facebook at Crashing the Mode, on Tumblr at the YJFiles.tumblr.com, on our website, CrashingTheMode.com. And if that somehow is not enough for you, you can email us at whelmedpodcast at gmail.com. You can also find us on YouTube, Stitcher, Spotify, and iHeartRadio, wherever you listen to podcasts. <laughs> And if you'd like to support our show, please consider sharing it with a friend and joining our chats on social media. You can support the show by giving us a five-star review and a rating on Apple Podcasts or your podcatcher of choice. Ratings, comments, and subscriptions help others find the show. If you do leave us a rating, please let us know at our email address or on social media, especially if you're outside the U.S., as those are much, much harder to find. And if you are able to support us monetarily and wish to do so, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash crashing the mode. Even $1 a month can help us bring you even more awesome discussion sessions, interviews, reviews, and more. And remember, stay whelmed, everyone. You've been listening to Whelmed, the Young Justice Files podcast. Our hosts are Rich Howard and Emily Booza. Our editor and producer is Neil Powell. Our theme was composed by Emily Mio. Our logo was created by Kevin Bates. Whelmed is a fan-made podcast and is not officially affiliated with DC Comics, DC Entertainment, Warner Brothers Animation, and any other owners of Young Justice or its related source material. As such, these companies have sole ownership of all symbols, images, names, logos, and proprietary material related to Young Justice. Original content of this podcast is ours under Creative Commons. Thanks for listening, and stay whelmed.